In this introductory video of the KQL Plus ClickOut series, I would like to explain the rationale for Curator login sites to make a dramatic shift from the AQL searches into using ClickOut and KQL. So let me talk about some things that uh, Curator, standard Curator, does not have. One is the concept of being cloud native. And this is not just running on Azure, AWS, and Google, which Curator and many others can do. That is not what cloud native means. Cloud native means to have the capability of grow and get more resources that it needs and also shrink when those resources are no longer needed and doing all this with demand. Let's say that you have a big peak of ingestion or you have a, a gigantic search uh, to create. You want to make sure that hardware resources are allocated and deallocated uh, at will. And this allows you to have an insane performance in spite of having tremendous amount of data being ingested. That curator simply could not do. You cannot put more appliances and then decommission the appliances and, and do that in a dynamic way. It's impossible. The other thing that curator did not have is to have that capability on the on the three main cloud providers, uh, AWS, Azure, and Google, as well as for those who want that on-prem. And we'll see how Curator accomplish the Curator login sites uh, accomplishes that. Another thing is the capability of making thread searches in a language that is oriented to Intel type of queries. AQL is definitely not that. It's a type of SQL. And SQL, we all know that is foreign to threat intelligence people. Now, at RSA, I got the opportunity to get to know Curator login sites. And I must say that it's a great vision that is beginning to see it being fulfilled. And IBM is executing on it. One of the things that it did, it's that it based all these, and this is a, a development that I understand has been going for years now. Uh, it, it, the, because of the acquisition of uh, IBM for Red Hat, it made the decision of making this running on top of OpenShift, which in turn runs on top of Kubernetes. And that is what allows it to run on AWS today. I understand that soon will be available in Azure as well as Google. And for those customers who wants to run things on-prem, you can also run OpenShift on-prem as well. Now, besides that infrastructure component, let's talk about other things. Let's talk about how traditional SQL-like databases have been. Uh, and these have been mostly what is called all LTP, online transaction processing. And this is these are databases that are record oriented, record based. So I want to put one record after another and all the data on the record on the structure being put in there. That's very good for many things, uh, but definitely not for what we do in threat intelligence. It's kind of a key value pair type of uh, access right again not good for when you're trying to aggregate and look for different columns in, in 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 the data that you are looking it's something that is good for read as well as write and it's definitely row oriented because every row is you know the part of the of the actual record and when you have a structure like that, it's 
it's not natural it is hard to aggregate data by column because the data is organized in rows so and that's always been a limitation and you know if we remember the days of databases I mean that, that was what ArcSight was back white wake then and and some of the other systems are similar to that examples of this type of uh, uh, row oriented uh, databases uh, Postgres which is good still for configuration things and but, but not for looking at threats and, and they don't write Arial itself on curator is like that you can again you said it's not exactly an RDBMS it is a uh, flat file type of a database but but it's, it's not uh, oriented on columns and of course MySQL is like that and there are a few other examples of it now for threat intelligence data what is it what is that is a database that is oriented for threat intelligence data It's what is called OLAP or LAP which is online uh, analytics uh, processing and the main difference is that the data is organized by columns not by records all the data in a column is stored next to one another as opposed to the other model all the data is, associ is associated to a particular field or column is what is called in other terms is C store as a column store type of query uh, it allows also because of that because you, you you put all the same type of data next to one another and you organize it like that is also very good for compression which uh, believe it or not due to IO standard type of IO uh, what you gain in the speed that you read the data because it is compressed uh, and you not only you not only you save space but also you get better performance on on the scalability of it it's natively easy it's intuitive to aggregate data which is what we do all the time in threat intelligence and we during this series uh, my plan is to teach you how to use kql on top of clickhouse uh, to see that so aggregating data from columns is again trivial natural it comes easy even when the columns are, are different but because all the data is associated on a column it's very easy to to do that examples of the this type of databases uh, you have redshift I believe that this was created by uh, AWS you have others like uh, BigQuery Uh, snowflakes those are some some of the names of the kind of first raw oriented databases and of course the topic of this video series ClickHouse which is an open source initiative that implements that um, people that have pioneered and have done this even before IBM did are the folks at Cloudflare, they use ClickHouse for the threat intelligence information. Guys at eBay and others. Yeah? And now, Curator Login Sites also is implemented on top of Now, and, and the fact that is that the, the ClickHouse also run because of the OpenShift uh, runs natively in all these platforms makes it, you know, very, very portable and attractive. And, and this is very important because uh, what you want to do is that you don't necessarily want to tie your uh, strategy on threat intelligence to either Google, Microsoft or, 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 or Amazon. You want to make sure that you have the freedom to move from one to another. That's in terms of the technology for databases. On the language, SQL has always been a problem. SQL is not native to any one of us 
and it's always been a, a weird syntax. It's a syntax that is oriented to online uh, transaction processing, RDBMSs and stuff. That, that's where, where the language actually uh, was born. And this is for database people, not for us. So, so we, we, we learn AQL, but I don't think that we felt like native on, on using it uh, as, as a language that is intuitive for threat hunters. Now, things that in SQL, and actually you, you can call, you can put AQL on, on the same uh, group. AQL is nothing more than a variation of uh, on the SQL. For example, one thing that has always confused me is the nesting. When you move from a, the initial part and then you embed another nested search. Well, to me that was well, that was always been extremely confusing to follow, and I'm sure that for you guys is always the case. This thing uh, was case insensitive, and and that led to uh, some things that you you don't know whether you it is really is this that I'm using uppercase, lowercase that my that I get a syntax error. Why why is it that it's not working for filtering? My goodness. There are so many things to do filtering with in SQL that makes us confused. You have the where, which KQL also has, and is the only one basically that you use, but you also have the have when you use one to another. You have a qualify when you use one to another. It's always, you know, very confusing. One thing that made people go into Splunk was the fact that Splunk was not AQL. Splunk made all the searches based on combination of pipes. These are the same pipes that we learned from Unix and, and also Windows carries that over in which what you do is that you have a sequence of pipes and so it's, you, you perform the first operation and then you pipe that into the next uh, group of operation and so on and so forth. So it is far more intuitive that all that ugly SQL nesting and, and I, I hope that I will be able to prove that to you. Uh, in this series of videos. It is very intuitive not only to write, as I will teach you, but also to understand. When you see a query written in KQL, it's really very simple to understand what is it that I that is that is doing precisely because of those pipes. And that's native to guys like us that come from the networking or the operate of the OS type of system, not not on on databases. So KQL took that those concept of the pipes from Splunk. But boy it did far more. And this is something that was created by Microsoft. It's open source and IBM adopted that, has a, an incredibly well-organized, rich set of operators and functions. Many of them have the, a C++ type of syntax, because that's what, uh, what Microsoft originally used to develop KQL. So, uh, and and the, the, the K stands for, uh, believe it or not, is Custo query language. Apparently the, the developers in Microsoft like Jack Cousteau. Uh, Cousteau is with C, not with K, but what the heck. Uh, th that's what, the, what uh, the, the name actually came from and actually stuck because when people learn KQL, like in the past when people knew uh, uh, the, the Splunk, I, I believe it was called SPL, they liked that concept. Well, KQL is far better, far richer than that. Uh, again, the, the the set of functions and operators is is not there are not that very many, but they are very consistent. You can do <laughs> whatever you want, from joins to you know all sort of math mathematical operations, and it's standard. It's something that you know once you learn it, it's not that this is the version for 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 Curita, the version for uh, you know for this or that. Is is one KQL and IBM has been very innovative by combining KQL with ClickHouse. I believe that nobody else has actually taken this powerful, powerful combination and that's what we're going to be learning in this series of videos. How you make intuitive searches from the security standpoint, from the threat intelligence standpoint, 
into an insanely fast and capable and scalable database.